number one thing that made you successful throughout law school? It's a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the it, it's not anything that you need to learn. I think more than anything, it's. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is like a really good video. I would definitely suggest watching the entire video. I know it is a little long, but I would definitely suggest watching the entire video. Um, I have Yoshi on this video. He is a recent law school graduate. He graduated like top 7% of his class. He has secured a big law job, currently studying for the bar. He also runs the law school mentor page. He drops like a lot of gems throughout these videos. I would definitely suggest watching the whole thing. Of course, I'll be back at the end for an outro, but if you are interested, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that, and yeah. Okay guys, so we have Yoshi today. He is a recent law school graduate. He also runs the law school mentor page, so you guys have probably saw him before, but I'll let him do more of an introduction, so Yoshi. Well, thank you for having me. Um, and I actually had you on the page, so thank you first and foremost. Um, yeah, so my name is Yoshi. Uh, I'm a recent graduate of UIC John Marshall Law School. I was actually the SBA president, the Student Bar Association president my 3L year, um, and a host of other things. Um, I'll be starting my career as an incoming corporate transactional associate at Kirkland and Ellis LLP in the Chicago office. And aside from that, I have just started studying for the bar. Okay. So you are special because I'm taking a break. I just like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I do have a question about the bar on here, so we'll talk about that later. So before you went to law school, what undergrad did you go to? What was your major in undergrad? So I went to the University of Missouri. Um, went to the University of Missouri for four years and came straight back to Chicago. Okay. Um, you could probably assume why, but I majored in journalism, broadcast journalism. Uh, so I have a past in reporting, anchoring. I actually reported for the NBC affiliate in Columbia, Missouri, um, and went there on a, a, a full ride for baseball. So that was kind of my path and determined to go to law school after working a year in a law firm. Okay, okay. To be a lawyer, did you want to do baseball? Yeah, my, my my first feeling when love was baseball. Um, it wasn't until, you know, you started getting injuries and started getting a little old that reality starts to set in. Um, and even journalism was sort of, I won't say a backup plan, but I saw myself doing that if, like, baseball didn't work out, right, talking about sports. And even then I felt like, you know, when I got my feet wet and – really got a chance to actually report anchor you know be on tv i felt like i was still like not utilizing my full potential so uh actually racial tension hit mizzou my senior year okay. that was a huge huge thing i got to recover that uh i mean it was national news mm -hmm. um espn covered it cnn covered it you know so i'm working with these national uh, platforms mm -hmm. And I'm meeting a bunch of lawyers in the process because KKK is on campus, right? Like all different types of things, right? So it's almost like a flashpoint of today, um, but it's Missouri, right? So uh, a lot of students decided to transfer, leave, like go home, just delay their studies, everything. And I didn't really have a choice because I'm like last year, right? Um, trying to figure out what am I do with the job. At senior year, I was still, I was still focused on journalism. And it really wasn't until that experience that I realized, like, I got to do more than just tell the story. I got to, like, impact it and find a way, you know, to do more with my platform and my potential. So uh, I researched, just asked a lot of questions to all the lawyers that are on campus uh, and then just continued to research as I graduated and realized journalism was for me because I wasn't going to a small town, <laughs> even smaller than what I was doing and making, like, salt off the peanut. No offense to any journalism, but I just knew. I personally was going to do, you know, something that brought me a little bit more joy and reward. Okay. Okay. So then what went into the process of choosing the law school that you went to? So the number one thing was I knew I wanted to come back home. Okay. Right. So I knew like family's huge. Family is very important to me. Uh, so, you know, I had lost my grandma right before I started law school uh, or even before I took the LSAT. So it was just kind of like a reinforcement to me that I needed to be like around my family, right? Because I had missed them for four years anyway. Mm -hmm. um, 
so Chicago was the spot. And then it, at that point, it was just a matter of which one of the six law schools. So I applied to, I think, four out of the six. Okay. Um, and a big reason why I chose USC, what is now UIC John Marshall, um, was scholarship. Okay. <laughs> but as well as like the writing program and uh, the network that they had. So we produce, I think we have the most alumni in the city as well as a top 10 writing program. So uh, I knew the brand was really strong, like being practice ready is like the slogan. And so when lawyers or law students graduate from Marshall, we know what we're doing, we know how to write, we know how to, to be practice ready. So that was enough for me. The culture was good, most diverse law school. So it, it provided me a little bit of a change, still a PWI, but it provided me a change right. um, and gave me the opportunity, I think, to, to succeed. So went all in. Did you already know what type of law you wanted to practice before you went or? Okay. Mm -mm. No, so the only thing I really committed to was I did enough research to realize what I could do with the JD. I knew it was very, very flexible and I knew that it would give me a platform both with my network and just the opportunities available as soon as I graduated. Whether that meant big laws, like small firms, sport law, entertainment, right? So I had passions, I had business passions, a lot of business passions and sports. Like that's kind of where my passion lies. I knew I could do both in a big way. Um, so for me, law school was really geared toward figuring that out. I didn't know what law, I didn't know how big of the law, I just kind of pursued the best opportunity in front of me and just kind of put my best foot forward every single day uh -huh. and took the opportunity that brought the, the best, I think, opportunity to, for growth, development, and just for career. Okay, okay. And so you mentioned that you did like a lot of extracurricular activities. How did you balance those? Because I remember from our conversation that you had really good grades. So how did you balance having like really good grades, extracurricular, still focusing on other things in your life? So my first year, I mean, it was a tale of most. I mean, I really just kind of buried myself in my grades and my books. Mm -hmm. um, I would use my, I mean, naturally everyone has to have free time, right? Or you have to have break time. Not yeah. free time, break time. So every uh, every day, right, lunchtime, dinner time, like the 12 and 5 o'clock hour, there was always events going on. So I, you know, moseyed my way around school, figured out, like, what organizations brought me the most interest mm -hmm. and, and value. Um, our career services office threw a lot of events in the 12 o'clock hour. So if I felt like it could bring me value, whether that be educational value, networking, professional value, I went. Um, I knew I could give myself at least one to two hours a day, but again, I still had to check myself and realize like if I wasn't prepared for class, I wasn't, you know, feeling like I was up to date or comfortable with the material. Then that always came first. Um, as far as anything outside of law school, it definitely took a backseat. Uh, I had great mentors. I had people in my ear telling me that like, listen, you don't want to take uh, any part of your one L for granted. You don't want to go back and think like, hey. I wish I gave more to my 1L. I wish I had given more of my time to my grades because I had more to give. I think the biggest thing about that all, and to your point of balancing, is the balance for me, 1L, was more of am I doing enough versus am I doing too much and will I be burnt out by finals? Okay. So, like, that was – there's really no way to tell, but besides knowing yourself, and I always tell law students, like, you have, like law school is about knowing yourself and – I think finding how you work most efficiently. Okay. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to. You know, recreate a will that's already been out there. So I just kind of took from a lot of different people. Uh, I knew how I studied. Uh, I mean, you naturally. I think you know, law school is a big transition. So the transition was the biggest thing. But then, as I got my feet up under me uh, after one all, and I realized that I did enough. Mm -hmm. I applied that same thing. Got a little bit more efficient my second semester, and then by two all, I was kind of. Uh, I was like in cruise control. Okay. And uh, and then I could like you know kind of spread my wings a little bit. I joined Black Law Student Association on the exec board, Entertainment Sports Law Association on the exec board. Uh, I was in the admissions office working, giving tours, uh, making an impact on the next generation, uh, and really just doing whatever it was. And I think twelve for me was more about professionalism and, and like expanding my network. So I went to a lot of networking events. Um, but 1L is just so crucial because within the span of one year, 
you can land the job that you will end up with after graduation. And that sounds crazy, but I always tell law students, like, if you put it into perspective that way, you only got to give one year of like true, true, utter dedication. And it can bring you the reward of three years, right? So. Okay. So wait, did you do that? Did you work 1L, the same place you're working at now? No, so what I mean by that is, so at the end of your first semester, you will be applying for your summer job. Okay, right. And then at the end of your first year, basically by the end of summer, before you even start your 2 you have already been interviewing, applied okay. um, for your next summer's job. Okay. So your 2 job. Now, I guess what I mean in totality is, your 2L job is usually where people will try and get their offer from because you don't work after 3L because you're studying for the bar. Right. Um, so ideally, you want to have the job that you would like an offer from your 2L year. Okay. So that's really based off of one year grades and one year effort. And I had that offer before I even started my 2L year. And as long as I didn't screw up anything crazy, like I basically had an offer. Really? One okay. year. Yeah. Okay. Nobody ever explained it like that. Okay, that's good to know. Front load your effort. Like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Once I finished my first semester, I was, like, crazy tired. Okay. And then, of course, it's like you, you remotivate yourself because you got a job you need to get. I mean, you got a second semester that you got to do the exact same, if not better. And then uh, after two, like, after the, fir the first year, second semester, I was, like, exhausted. Like, I literally felt like after my final that I could collapse. And... I mean, it's true, right? Like you got, so my first semester, I had three finals, second semester, I had four finals. So even that one, that extra final was a whole different, like <laughs> it's a whole 13 weeks of material that you got to study for. Like that was just the added stress. I, I see the, I see the, <laughs> the anguish in your eyes right now. <laughs> um, but no, don't worry. I mean, I just think at the end of the day, I just didn't want to have any regret and I didn't. So I'm very grateful. And to be honest, like full disclosure, I never got anything under a three, seven in a semester dean's list every every semester like, yeah and this yeah my i just graduated with like a three eight four and top i want to say like top seven percent okay that's a big deal like <laughs> yeah i mean but to me it was like let me like as soon as i took them loans out i'm like this is an investment yeah. and i promise you I'm going to give everything I got to it, right? And I think it's so important to have support. Like, I couldn't do it by myself. So there were plenty of days I didn't want to do it. There's plenty of days I fell asleep on my books. <laughs> and I had someone, like, waking me up, like, how oh, you need to get back to it, right? Like, so accountability, I think, is the biggest. Okay. Accountability partners in law school, accountability partners outside of law school, people who know your dreams and your goals and who are going to continue to push you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Speaking of loans, were you able to secure like additional scholarship your 2L and 3L year? Yeah. So for me, you know, again, it's about asking questions. I came in with a partial scholarship. I want to say about maybe 50% tuition. And by the end of my 1L year, I worked up to a full ride. And that was from talking to admissions. Mm -hmm. But again, like the biggest thing was you know, in law school, you learn how to negotiate. But to me, I knew the value I was going to bring to the school and what all I had personally, right, my value. So, again, when you're able to put it in those terms, right, I'm giving tours for you guys. I literally had people emailing me, texting me, and telling me I'm coming to John Marshall because of the tour you gave. I'm, giving, I'm coming to John Marshall because of the advice you gave. Like, I want to be there because you showed me it was possible. Like, so those type of, like, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing y'all tens of thousands of dollars. And on top of that, I'm getting the grades that you are giving 100% scholarships to. So, you know, there's not much more to say for real. But I made sure I did my research. And I made sure that if it wasn't going to come from the school, that I knew all the other opportunities out there. Um, and that's another piece of advice I give people. is like, as one else, you choose what you get involved in and what you go, like, like, like jump right into. But at least know what's out there, right? Like, don't be ignorant, right? As long as you know the opportunities, you know the jobs out there, you know the scholarships out there, if the deadline passes, at least you knew, at least you made a conscious choice as opposed to, 
wow, I missed this dream job opportunity because I was so busy in my books. Like you got to be able to do both. Right. For real. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think you already kind of talked about this, but what do you think is like the number one thing that made you successful throughout law school? It's a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. I think the, it, it's not anything that you need to learn. I think more than anything, it's like life skills that made me successful. I mean, the athlete in me, the being competitive, waking up early, going to bed late, managing different things, um, being good with stress, mm -hmm. uh, discipline, sacrifice. But I mean, it, it probably, if I had to give you one thing, it'd probably be discipline. Okay. Because it's, you know, it's discipline, they say it's what you, it's being able to do what you don't want to do, right? Like, are having the the discipline to do it so that's like week nine week 10 week 11 week 12 when every day almost is the same like weekends and me much because i was still studying right. you know what i mean like but you got to be able to listen to yourself and balance mental health is very very important law like life outside of law school does not stop so you know deaths in families like mm -hmm. people losing jobs like health all that type of stuff right you got to be able to like factor in all that so scheduling but it's still discipline right and being able to say what i set out to do i'm going to do right and i'm not going to stop until i finish it right okay i don't know if you're greek but being greek also helped so if anyone's out there greek it helped with like memorizing i was just like law school basically is like you know well cap opposite is a non-hazing fraternity but it is just like pledging <laughs> so if you can put your mental like into that and like sleepless nights it's just i'm memorizing a lot of information uh -huh. and i basically made a, a little brain like i did flashcards and i was just going through them and i remember them you know what i mean like under pressure uh -huh. so there's a lot of different things i mean there's definitely a formula law school uh once you find that formula that works for you it's you can apply that to any subject okay Okay, so you talked about like personal life balancing that, but you were in a relationship the whole time you were in law school, right? How did that work out? <laughs> hmm. Well, there's a video on my Instagram about it, uh, but my girlfriend was very, very supportive. Um, we met before mm -hmm. law school, so I think that played a big, big role. Mm -hmm. If I had not, I couldn't imagine doing a new relationship just because like you don't know each other. So, like, there was a part about this process that I didn't know. I mean, law school is the unknown. And so that stress of, like, not knowing what tomorrow brings, what your grade bring, like, this, just the stress that the other person doesn't know what you're going through and just the miscommunications that happen, like, a big part of why it worked was, you know, she was very supportive, but we also, like, knew each other. Like, we had been dating for a couple of years already. So it's... um. I mean, everyone's different, though. You're like, you got to know yourself. And I knew that grades was a very, like, huge priority of me. So, like, she supported that. She was able to sacrifice a big part of our relationship, I think. Um, but she, all, I mean, like, she went to law school, too. Like, she'll be the first one to tell you, like, she went to law school, too. Not, not actually, but, like, my degree is her degree, right? Like, she helped me with my flashcards. She helped me with a lot of different things. And she brought... And, and she made my life easier. And I think that's what a, a, a you know, a significant other is supposed to do. Uh, she held me down in the kitchen for me. You know, I didn't have to worry about cooking. So uh, it was stability. It was the stability that I needed. Um, and so I owe her a lot. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's, let's go through some general tips you would give for these different, I guess, topics. So first question is for incoming 1L students, what would you tell them about how to choose the right school for them? I think the number one thing I, when I hear this question is, you probably want to go to a school where you intend to practice. You can make it work regardless. It just makes the transition easier. You're learning specific laws in that school, right? So if you go to Illinois, a school in Illinois, you're probably learning a lot of Illinois law. You're writing with Illinois law. Um, and so when you're taking the Illinois bar, you're going to be learning state specific. I mean, UBE is one thing, but it's just e easier. And then the network, right? So you're inevitably networking in that state. Uh, if you intend to, let's say, go to a school in one state and then transfer to another to practice, it takes a very conscious effort to not only land a job, 
but then to like make that transition as best as you can make it right you have to literally be in that city whether it be in the summer times with jobs or finding ways to network um chicago is a big city but i think you know the legal community is small right and so in three years i'm you're in a lot of the same events as people that you see consistently so i think that's like the number one thing um but you like this is your home for three years like you have to really feel comfortable um and you got to know yourself again i knew i needed to be around family because they'd have my back mm -hmm. if i was halfway across the country it'd be a little bit hard to go home to mom for a sunday meal or like whatever it was right like but it, it's, it's all those different things i think you can make anything work you just need to make sure that you know, you're well-researched, like know what you're looking to get out of law school. Law school should not be plan B. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. Like, and what I mean by that is some people just say, I'm going to figure it out in law school. I'll just figure it out. It's one thing to figure out the practice area, but it's not like, don't figure out like if you want to be a lawyer. Like once you commit, this is your life, mm -hmm. period. Like by the end of 1L1, you're dreaming in the law. Mm -hmm. Like, like the way you think I've my whole like line of thinking has been rebranded. So this is definitely your life. Yeah. And so you're committing to not only your three years, but a lifetime. So you want to make sure that this is the decision that brings you the most happiness because there's a lot of stress mm -hmm. and there's a lot of non-happiness, unhappiness. Okay. So with it, what would you suggest people do to prepare for the one year? Relax, breathe. Uh, don't give me the looks you're giving. Um, but to be honest, I mean, learn to love everything you read. You're going to be doing a lot of reading, a lot of reading. So turn on the captions of Netflix movies, read those things, uh, but just read everything, right? Like, and, and just be positive, right? Like learn how to go through life. And I mean, you really got to love the journey. I think I think your mentality is so important. Like, and I think if you can train your mentality, that's the biggest thing. Like if you go into law school and you feel like I'm going to love every part of this, it's going to be rocky. It's going to be a roller coaster, but I'm going to learn to love it. And what I mean by that is you have an opportunity that a lot of people don't have, right? People are fighting for the spot that you got, that seat that you paid for, people want it. And if you can take, you know, life and, and really law school with that mentality, you're, you're, you're honestly honored and privileged to be in that space. And so you really got to like learn to love it, right? Because someone's really wish they could be in that spot to learn the law. So yeah, it sucks. Yeah, there's times where you don't want to do it. But like if you, I, I really love my 1L year as, as crazy as it was because I felt like not, you know, I found the things that were I was passionate about, but also I found the things that were rewarding. And like the people I was meeting, judges, like you'd be in the elevator with judges and partners in law firms and all these like top individuals, people I probably would have never met or at least wouldn't have consciously met, right? And, and now you're part of an elite circle of what will be potential lawmakers and law enforcers and people who, I mean, you're in the top 1%, right? Education wise and a lot of times career wise. So, like, that's something to be very, very proud of. But, just to like own the journey, like literally own the journey. I got two books, of course, that I would recommend, and they probably, I'm not gonna say they should start paying me as much as I would recommend these books, but literally, a student's guide to law school helped me with my mentality of approaching one all year. And then the law school hustle by Ashley Kirkwood, she's like my mentor. Mm -hmm. But it's like how to get the big law job and everything else, like the mentality needed, the confidence. Um, but I, it's a mental thing. It's like, I think the hardest thing is like, you don't know what to expect. So the better you can meet the expectation of law school and knowing as much as you can, mm -hmm. it'll just help take a lot of the tension and the anxiety off. Okay. Okay. So since you were in the top 7% of your class, give us some tips for studying and grades. Um, office hours. You have to be in office hours. Uh, you are not, t you are not taking, Kaplan, Themis, Barbary, like a lot of people use supplemental outlines, like that's great, but use those as supplements, that's what they're for, like supplement your knowledge, but your primary source has to be your teacher and then the textbook, because even the teacher will negate some of the things in the textbook. So you definitely want to be in office hours. Um, and a little hack I always give students is, 
there's a lot of times you will take a class that will be 100% of your grade and you won't know how well you're doing because you're used to these constant assessments that undergrad brought or you know, it's a different type of learning. You're learning cases and you're reading cases with the intention of learning the law to apply it to a whole different new set of facts. So you'll never see that same case again. You may see things that look similar, but you're going to see new things that you need to find a way to apply and trigger. So issue spotting is important. Mm -hmm. um, but like, don't take any shortcuts your one on year. You'll hear Quimby, you'll hear all these different things. Learn your process first, build a great foundation because you don't want a lawyer who's going to take shortcuts. So you might as well learn how to, you know, read every case because in that, as time consuming as it is, and as much time as it like literally takes and the energy it takes, you, you don't want to skip any cases because you're strengthening your issue spotting skill. And what I mean by that is like, if you're reading 70 cases a week or whatever, reading through all those cases and having tons and tons of extra information to wade through of what's important, you're strengthening a skill. And so when you get to the test and you see all these red hearings and you see things that aren't relevant, you're able to wade through it because you've been trained. Like, but if you just went to the Quimby, which gives you the loss of the briefs, and you know exactly what you're looking for already, you aren't training that skill, right? So those are that's like the second tip I would say. Office hours that, and then the, the, the hack I give that I like, I'm all over the place clearly. The hack I give is um, you want to find ways to assess yourself and review before the final. Do not wait for finals period like set times in your schedule for me it was every friday where i was reviewing my material highlighting things that i didn't understand and going to office hours but then assessing the information and the topics i covered so for example if let's say by week three you finish intentional torts all the intentional torts then set a time aside to do some essays and some multiple choice and take those essays and multiple choice into your teacher's office hours and talk through them inevitably what happens is if it, and if they don't give you any assessments, that'll give you a chance to almost take the final before the final. You'll see how the teacher analyzes. You'll constantly reinforce the things. And you're going to realize that you learned some things wrong. And you don't want to wait to being tested or when it really matters to figure that out. So the more you can put that into your schedule, I think it's a very uncomfortable feeling because you feel like you don't have enough time, but, but make time. Like every Friday, I was it was a long day, but I'm so grateful that I did it. And at 6 p.m. instead of like, focusing on going out or whatever, I was doing what I needed to do uh, in the library. So what about for budgeting? Because, you know, we all hear that in law school we have no money. Do you have any tips for that? Well, it depends on your scholarship and it depends on your lifestyle. Um, I mean, naturally, it just kind of depends on, like, your background and a lot of, I mean, I didn't have a huge savings going into law school, so my lifestyle was loans for mm -hmm. how I survived with loans. Mm -hmm. So again, my 1L year was different than my 2L and 3L year because by the time I had my full ride, I was just doing living expenses. So a lot of the financial aid offices will have sort of uh, a guide as to how much the average student spends. But I mean, it's really just budgeting, right? So once you figure out where you're going to live or if you're not moving, if you did move, factoring in rent for those uh, 12 months mm -hmm. and then how much you plan on eating and everything else. Um, so I really just kind of, you know, I mean, I'm from Chicago, so I knew the cost of living already. Uh, it's well, I mean, you get, you got to be well researched. I know there's a lot of resources though. So definitely ask your school because mm -hmm. even our school has like people who will help you find apartments, people who will help you budget, right. And all these different things. Um, but I mean, you don't really have time to go out to all these fancy dinners every week. So if that's what you were doing beforehand, maybe you can cut back in that. You, you know, you don't have time to be go shopping every week. So you can maybe cut. you will see people online shopping in class, but don't fall in the trap. Okay. Uh, but no, I mean, it really just depends on you. It's kind of hard to give budgeting advice, but I mean, it's the more you know yourself, the better. Um, so it is definitely, I think, you know, some people, We'll have their loan and when the when the check drops and refund clears, people go crazy, right? People in the bar, like and I will say like drinking is a culture in law school. I mean, a lot of the networking events have drinking and but even after class, like there's a lot of bonding is done over drinking, so a lot of people spend their money in the bar. Um 
it just depends on what you like what brings you happiness i guess um yeah i mean but you want to factor all that in you want to factor like mental breaks you know so if that's you love going to the spa you go into the movies like the, the more you can forecast and foresee yourself doing the better so okay. kind of hard to give specific advice but um i mean you're gonna be doing a lot of studying so a lot of maybe you need a coffee fund or i don't know if you don't drink coffee like something something like snacks i don't know if you- <laughs> snacks okay okay it makes sense so pretty much just know yourself is the best thing yeah okay. literally all right. So what about networking? You mentioned that you were like meeting judges and elevators. How did you even become comfortable to talk to them though? Just because you're right there. A lot of people still wouldn't talk. So networking. Mm. <laughs> so honestly, networking, like, first of all, I don't really like the word networking, to be honest. I mean, you get accustomed to it, but I don't really think of it that way. Like I think about it as relationship building. And to me, like that's way more efficient than just saying, I know, this person and I have their number or their business card like it's one thing to get a business card and it's another thing to use it and be able to call reach out text email whenever and that comes from relationship building so I have equity partners who I can text based off of the relationship I've built um, people think I'm the, the networking king but to be honest like I said I just do the small things and okay. small things equate to a relationship right so when you think about your best friends you think about the people who you're really close with what makes them that and that's what i tried to do not of course starting off right i wasn't going to be like hey best friend to a judge right but at the same time it's you know how can i relate to this person um you know once i do get a business card following up um to your point of being able to be confident enough to approach anyone i mean i'm already sort of an extrovert i like to talking too if you can't tell um but i I mean you also like you aren't going to make any shots you don't take right so i try not to live with any regret and i always wanted to make sure that my first impression was the best impression so one of the tips i always give too is like you're in a graduate professional school a lot of people always ask me like how do you dress i ain't gonna lie to you i was business casual at least every day really why (laughs) yeah so i'm in a hoodie right now but this like to be honest yeah look okay so yeah, i'm gonna give you the perfect reason why aside from the fact that i came from a very like like reporting background anchor so i had a bunch of like dress clothes um first impressions everything so if i was in the elevator with a judge and i was in sweats especially as an african-american male i'm sorry but like you got to learn to play the game until you can change the game right like at the end of the day to, to some, I'm just another black male. And if you see me in sweats, you've already, you've already characterized me however you want to. I just knew that I was going to be different. And before I even opened my mouth, you weren't going to be able to tell me that I didn't give you a good and first impression. Right. And so with like, at least let my mouth, like, let me put my foot in my mouth by talking as opposed to like my, my appearance. But then even more practical than that, there were so many times in law school where I learned about a law firm's event or you know a partner asked me if i'm free to go and get coffee today i didn't want to be like oh i'm not dressed Mm -hmm. so another tip though is some people just keep a blazer or like some heels or whatever in their locker okay but i was just always ready so i didn't have to get ready for real so um i don't know i think it was a lot of it was first impression and then it was like people could not believe two or three other like you're still dressing up like i thought you were like doing this just for show Nah, to be honest, I think it made me different, and it, it was part of my brand. I'm super, super huge on branding, so I just knew, like, before I even opened my mouth, like, my brand was going to be strong. So you took me seriously, right? Like, you take people serious in suits. Um, and so for me, it was, like, all of those different things, and it ended up just enhancing my brand overall. Okay, okay. So last thing for general tips, what about job interviews? job interviews so to be completely honest job interviews are are interesting just because if you can do a lot of the legwork on the front end it makes it easier on the back end to clarify that if you're doing a lot of networking right by the time you get into the interview it really should be very very informal what i mean is like if you can meet people in that firm 
you can develop these relationships, people who can back you and talk about things that are off your resume, right? Your grades will already get you in the door most likely for either that interview, but a lot of them will then be like attesting to who you are and the value you can bring. And so if you got someone who can do that outside of the 30 minutes you'll have in a screener interview, that's, that's the key, right? That's like, if I could recommend you because I know who you are, that's going to go so much further than a blind resume, even if the resume is perfect. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was the reason I got Kirkland is a long story. I did the, the legwork. I knew like eight attorneys before I even got into my second round of interviews. And so I could attest to the culture. I, could, I was well-researched. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, I had people advocating for me. Mm -hmm. So for me, like that's the tip of job interviews is like, if you can show who you are before you get into that room for 30 minutes, it just makes it every, everything else so much easier. Okay, so with that, let's talk about how you did get the Kirkland and Ellis position. I felt like me getting Kirkland and Ellis was the, the penultimate, like the cherry on top of to everything I'm saying, right? It was everything I put into words and into action, and it was like the, the door unlocking to all the things that, like all my hard work and the seeds I planted. So yeah, guys, that is the end of part one. Part two, we'll go into more details about how he secured his big law position. He'll also talk about prepping for the bar, some other law school experiences, and just some more general tips that you guys can use while you're in law school, while you're looking for jobs, while you're networking, while you're building relationships, just some things like that. So of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified when that video is posted tomorrow. But yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. Bye, y'all.